The way I approach teaching is I envision it as a two-way street that's filled with exploration and engagement. I would like to encourage my students to ask questions and think about uh, the topic at hand by themselves. And I facilitate that by sharing my own questions and provide them that time to think, analyze, and discuss amongst themselves. Now, as much as possible, I also want to facilitate a hands-on, immersive environment that literally and figuratively immerses them in the marine world or whatever topic that we're covering at the moment. So for the sample lecture, we'll be discussing about coral reef ecosystems and why they're considered as rainforests of the sea, but also considered as the canaries in the coal mine, unfortunately. And following the lecture, I give the students that immersive experience where they actually get to see and do for themselves what we've talked about in class. So you first thing we're going on is just to uh, Thank you. Uh, jog your memories <laughs> from what you saw or what you viewed last time, and maybe uh, have, get you to start thinking about some certain concepts. So, you just identify. I'll ask some uh, what, a particular question about the image. Okay. If anyone knows the answer, so you first this this image. Uh, what does it what does it show? Uh, apples. So you know what the, everyone knows what an apple is. So what's an apple? An apple. Surrounded by forests. And in the middle. Yeah. And close to body of water. Okay. Other answer? What is an apple? So, Marisha, we concept the apple surrounded by coral reefs. We can get a concept. Dead uh, coral, but 
in actual uh, when they're living, they serve as a natural seawall or great water, even if they're uh, not immediately on our shores. Finally, bleach or so bleach because nabumote <clears throat> and bakit bleach siya? Sige ba lang ba sa kanya? Bakit siya nang magtayin? Ano yung nangyari sa kanya? Bakit siya Pero ano yung nawala sa kanya? Ano yung nakita niyo kanina? So yung pictures na yun shows basically yung two different perspectives of coral reefs and in terms of a large scale from space or apple and then from the tiny larvae uh, coral that builds up those big structures and all the different you know, uh, species and interactions that you could possibly see in coral reefs, very diverse area. Um, but now you know, it, it offers a lot of humans in terms of function. Uh, natural reef water example, but it's quite threatened <coughs> already in terms of uh, many many uh, anthropogenic activities, so including climate change, and that's part of the reason why corals leach. So you know, the thing that we need to do is to talk about. And if you notice the title. Coral reefs, canaries of the ocean. Alam niyo naman yung canary. It's a bird. So, uh, think of bakit na bakit na tinatawag na canary of the ocean uh, coral reefs. Si Pinimero ng ano kasi yung sino ba minaka kaalam ba nung, nung historical uh, na ginagawa sa mga canary? Ano yung ginagawa sa kanila? Ano? Ginaano? Ha? Kaya rin mo? Sa mines, diba? Ano yung ginagawa sa kanila? Para pag sila po yung early water yung air quality sa local air quality So early warning for the air quality sa mines. Siko na sila mamamatay. Baka merong poisonous gas in the mines. So by the carbon monoxide, uh, other poisonous gases. So the miners used to bring the birds uh, to, to be an indicator that if there are poisonous gases. Because they're sensitive to those. So, Think of the coral reefs then uh, in terms of that analogy. <clears throat> so, I think two perspectives of a reef, and I think that's one of the fascinating things with it, is the coral polyp to the huge structure. So, coral polyp, these are different types of uh, corals, and if you see those hairy uh, structures, and little not so apparent, but here there's a few apparent, and here's the actual skeleton. But those hairy looking structures, those are the tentacles, right? The uh, polyps with their tentacles that they use for feeding. So from the, each of these circles is one or a polyp. And eventually, that growth of the coral polyp and reproduction, you end up with huge coral structures that eventually become uh, possibly islands, even part of our country is made of all these uh, coral reefs. So, the power of those uh, tiny organisms to build up huge 
structures <coughs> that you know are very um, strong and can withstand a lot of forces. So humans. So magsimula tayo with the small scale from the coral polyp perspective. Uh, so there is some prominent coral reef scientist, Veron. He was saying that this symbiosis of the coral animal with um, the algae, the zooxanthellae, in his face, that is the best, uh, that was one of the uh, best achievements or great achievements of the uh, corals and that allowed them to build these reefs. So the zooxanthellae, or the symbiotic algae, provides food for the coral host, and the wild animal provides the shelter and also some of the growth requirements of the algae. So very mutually beneficial for both of them. So corals can be both primary producers because of the zooxanthellae and carnivores. So they're carnivorous because of these tentacles. They filter out uh, plankton as well. Zooplankton, tiny, um, maybe tiny organisms, tiny baby organisms from the water and bring those food into the um, mouth of the coral polyp. So this opening here is both their mouth and the anus. <clears throat> and so the, from polyps to reefs, those corals that you see, even the small, are composed of tens to hundreds of thousands of uh, polyps. And they can grow to very big size, certain species, or carpet a whole big area with uh, their growth. They achieve great age, so we'll talk about that later. Produce enormous quantities of larvae, baby corals. And you can think of the coral reef as something like a net that filters the water for food. Yung tawag na parang uh, net of mouths. <laughs> Kasi parang itong mga mouths na to, na nagpifilter ng tubig, tapos nandun siya sa diba, edge, that's a my reef. Tapos parang siya isang malaking net na nagpifilter to be uh, uh, that surrounds it. <clears throat> so how do you build the reefs? And we then think of how fast corals grow. Right? So this image shows a type of a reef structure. So boom coral reef yun na ginawa no coral. For scale, isang speed boat to. Uh, siguro mga 25 foot to. <clears throat> so how fast do corals grow? Your massive corals, in your mga parang matulog, boulders, they grow relatively slow, about 0.5 cm to 2 cm per year. So, then, uh, ano 2 cm? Uh, 2 cm per year. The, sorry, the branching corals, they can go up to about tens of centimeters per year. So if they mga mas uh, uh, thinner branching or the more robust branching corals, so yun mas mabibili sila ng outgrowth, tens of centimeters per year. So kanyari, makakita kayo na coral na uh, from here to here ang diameter. Sige, spherical na diameter. So, mga ilang years old na yun. <laughs> Kung yan yung massive coral na more, ano, one, mga one, uh, two meters, sabihin mo na, two meters in diameter. One thousand meters. One thousand. <laughs> so, 
for the skin and tone. So that's what's actually being used by taxonomists or systematics uh, specialists for coral to identify corals to species. Imagine again how tedious that is. So we counting ilang ano to, walls in that one coral poly, ilang segments, etc. It's like it's you know, so this is important, obviously, for ha to have the genetic diversity as well. So, hindi pa din puro asexual budding lang or fragmentation. Important din yung sexual reproduction aspect for the corals. And having that larvae, what else um, does it imply? If you have a lar uh, larval stage for corals. Uh, where is it? Where, is the lar where does the larvae live? Or is it sa ilan? Sa sea floor or floating? So that's uh, that implies that that larvae can go to other places apart from the natal reef area, depending on the currents. <coughs> So different corals have coral species can have different types or forms or morphology. So ito yun yung sa field pag ano may kita tapakita yung iba ibang types of corals. Ah, parang yun ang anila very diverse din ang corals especially dun sa harap ng tayo. You have here the folios. Bakit yun folios? Folosha. Mas ang leafy, parang netus, flowery uh, formation. <laughs> Meron kang, ito yung branching na uh, corals. And then you have um, massive or submassive, depende lang naman yung size. Yun yung mga mas bilog lang or subspherical. And you have encrusting, this one, meaning it's just covering and following the contour of the substrate. So it's growing the, uh, the tinatakpan niya lang yung seed floor. And then you have a solitary coral mushroom. Kasi itong lahat to, these are colonial, many type coral polyps. But mushroom corals are solitary. Uh, they have a big polyp. Uh, mushroom coral merong bilog na ganyan lang, merong Oblong, ibang mga tao. Um, eto, kaya plate, <laughs> obviously man, <laughs> na kasi flat siya. So, sa tingin niyo, sa tingin makikita yung plate corals. Sa, sa malalim mo sa magbabaw na malalim, kasi minamaximize ni surface area na pwede makakuha na. Ilaw. So, merong rational bakit ganyan yung form of corals. Mas makikita niyo yun. So, ito yung recipe. <laughs> Para sa coral leaf. <laughs> Gusto yung mga ng coral leaf. Ang recipe. Ito yung coral. You have a certain amount of salt. <laughs> so it, it's about mid-range uh, saltiness. Ni merong mga corals that can thrive in very very salty conditions like those found in the Red Sea, uh, Mediterranean, but they're specialized for those conditions. And the more typical is around 25 to 35 parts per thousand. And then, of course, you have to <laughs> keep them, uh, not, but not boil them. <laughs> so they want to have this uh, around mid-range warm temperature. So around 25 to 29 is the optimal uh, uh, temperature range for leaves. And uh, they don't really want a lot of herbs. <laughs> herbs. <laughs> Nutrients. <laughs> yung mga, um, in uh, other 
uh, other particles mo in the water, suspended sediments, because those decrease light. Uh, nutrients, because that can lead to, to algae instead growing, uh, instead of the corals. So, of course, you know, kailangan ng energy source. So, ako yung Dahil there, So, all of this, you combine that recipe, where do you expect to find coral reefs in the world? So, tropical, subtropical areas. Warm enough, clear, and usually major clear waters. Uh, so, deep and shallow with enough light. So typically between 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south, this is your distribution of coral reefs around the uh, world. So, although, meron na ba nakarinig ng cold water uh, reefs? Deep water reefs? So they've been seeing some of those in Norway, mga upper, uh, very cold countries. But those, the corals there, are diba, two modes of feeding sila. So in those deep reefs, do you think they'll be primary producers or more carnivores? So yung ganun species, they they switch to the more carnivores. Yeah, they can still function. But it's, hindi pa sure kung ganun sila ka extensive compared to the, the ones that you find in the shallow. So, kanina, yun yung from the coral quality perspective. Ngayon, pag-isipan natin yung reef from that large scale. So, ito yung reef that builds up this island. And ito yung current na existing na reef around it. So, um, kung isipin nyo yung isang reef area, marami siyang zones. So, Meron tayong idealized zone. Kung kunyari naglalakad ka, magsusnorkel, kanyari, ano na kayo, expert snorkelers. At, or gusto niyo na mag-explore, di ba? Uh, may life vest, or may boat na tinutong kayo sa, sa ikot, <laughs> for some reason. Um, pwede kayong galing sa shore. Imagine nyo that you're snorkeling from the shore all the way to the deeper part. And there's a coral reef area in the middle. So, from that shore, what you see, actually, ito yun. So, kanyari, meron ka mga, you're, you're, uh, mag-explore kayo, galing dito, kung punta dito. Wow. <laughs> so, you start off here, this is the lagoon. So, you see it's dark blue, because it's deeper, and usually sandy, or medyo muddy na, na portion. Um, and, wala pa masyadong corals dyan maybe one or two, just a few here and there. And then you start seeing this. Ito na yung tinatawag na may mga patch reef, uh, reef flat area, where you start having more dense patches of corals. So in that zone, it's still shallow, there's a lot of light, but there's also a lot of sediments because it's shallow, uh, medyo can be turbid because of water coming from land um, and possibly nutrients. So, tapos medyo sandy pa, so hindi pa ganun ka uh, okay yung substrate para makasettle yung corals. Kaya hindi pa talagang dense yung corals mo sa area. Pagdating mo dito, yan na yung tinatawag na reef crest zone and dyan, ano yung puti in waves. Ito na yung nasa likod ng waves. So ito yung nagbe-break yung waves. Yung puti na part na yan. So, that's the part that gets all of that wave energy and yung sea wall mo na coral reef uh, breaks the wave energy. And so hindi maabot all the way to the back and to the shore. <clears throat> So, dyan sa part na yan, nagbe-break yung reef, ah, uh, sorry, yung waves, magka-drive ba dyan ang branching na ko? 
Ano mangyayari na sa kanila? Magbabali pa. So, meron naman ilan pa rin branching project, but especially in the areas with very strong wave action, you'll see the, ano yung pinaka, ano yung form na pinaka-currently? Passive. 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 There's passive, ano ba? Passive. And crusting. Kasi nandun lang siya naka-happen sa ilalim. Mababa yung profile mo. So, then here, that's the part that's called the four week zone. Palalim na. So, nagsuslope na siya, pababa. Um, this is kind of the more ideal uh, zone for coral development. Mas diverse na yung kung types of corals and other species mo. Um, may mga branching, may mga massive, may iba pang species of, of invertebrates. And then finally, dito, well, actually, dito ko ito. Ito, yun yung part na nag-drop off na, mas pat, malalim na, mas kaunti yung light. Then, yun na yung mga plating corals mo na uh, kaya nakaka-harvest na more light. Uh, and the wall, yun na yung drop off. Iba na rin, more of mga sponges, mga iba pang invertebrates. So, actually, ito yung naka-interest akin sa marine science. Kasi nung nag-Puerto Galera ako na college, meron kami field trip na animal ecology. Tapos nag-pinatransect kami na uh, from Long Island pa labas. Nakita, kita-kita yung, hindi naman ganito ang exact zones. But you, 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 you see the zones. And na-intrigue ako kung bakit, bakit gano'n. Anong, anong nagkakos ng iba uh, uh, zonation and areas with the young ecologist. <laughs> Marine ecologist. So, next time, pagka, may kahit sa aeroplano, minsan kita mo talaga yung own zones na so, isipin nyo, meron ibig sabihin nyo in terms of the underwater uh, organisms that they play. So the reef, yung reef na yan, yung, yung ano, uh, nakikita nyo structure, that's the whole reef, right? From that pollen to ilang kilometrong islands and structures um, na po-form. So how does that grow? How does that, how does that reef grow? Basically, plus minus ang naman. We have the biological accretion or addition of material. So because of your primary reef building organisms, which are your primary reef building organisms currently, yung coral. The other organisms, meron pang iba doon na calcium carbonate, ano, the sponge. Meron mga algae na calcium carbonate din. So sila yung nag-work together to build your reefs. So coral ang star, but meron pang marami pa actually na, na stars in the background. <laughs> Corals ang yung pinakakilala. Plus, you have sediment accretion. So meron kayong biological derived material. Meron kayong mga galing sa land na material or nadadala ng currents na nai-import dun sa reef area at nasisement niya rin yung, um, together with the um, reef-building organisms. Pero syempre, kung merong addition, may subtraction. So, ano yung tawag doon sa subtraction? Isa? Meron ka? Accretion? Meron ka? Ano yung nangyayari? Ha? Start with an E. Ha? Ano? Excretion. Erosion. Meron ka na-erode yung reef mo because of physical properties, yung waves, di ba? Yung waves mo nakaka-destroy din yung framework. So na-erode siya because of that. Or currents. Chemical, ano yung nakaka-erode ng calcium carbonate? Actually, ocean acidification is a potential eroding process. And meron din your organisms. So, uh, example of yung nag-i-erode sa reef, sea urchin. 
Tapos yung, ano yung fish na kumakain? Parang uh, fish. Yun, yung i-erode dyan nung reef kasi kinakain yung fruit. So, marami iba-ibang or like, worms. Yung mga na, nagbaburrow dun sa coral at saka framework, those erode the reef as well. So, ito. Ito sa mga, if you think of reefs from a geological perspective, <laughs> So this is reef growth is if this these are positive. Okay. Pagka uh, pwedeng ma-drown ang reefs. Isipin niyo to. Kaya pwedeng ma-drown ang reefs kung ito ang nanginibabaw. May erode siya. Hindi niya kaya i-add on yung uh, material for the reef to grow and the sea level is rising. For example, so, hindi siya makakatch up to sa changes sa sea level or uh, other changes occur. So, for the geologist here, ito yung definition ng reef na hindi, na from, uh, not from the more biological aspect. It's a discrete carbonate structure kasi made of calcium carbonate, yung framework, formed by in situ. Ano yung sabihin in situ? Local. So, uh, on-site, local process na um, organic components, so kasi nga, ginagawa ng corals, ng materials, so, that develops ito, uh, important, topo topographic relief. So, merong uh, highs and lows yung structure, hindi lang flat. Kaya ganun yung pagsarit mo, may ups and downs yung sa uh, area. <clears throat> Kaya nakaka-influence siya ng flow ng tubig in the uh, ocean. So, dito sa Pilipinas, there's about 5% of the world's coral reefs in our country. So, actually, if you think about you know, our small area <laughs> in relative to the group, 5% is still a big number because of our coastline uh, Mahaba. <clears throat> and we're also lucky because coral reefs are actually one of the most productive and diverse ecosystems. So, Usually, di ba sinasabi yung coral reefs are the rainforests of the sea. <laughs> but actually, um, sometimes coral reefs can be more uh, productive than rainforests. Some forest. rainforests. Oh, rainforests are the forests of the, <laughs> of the land. <laughs> Yan alam mo. Yan ay sasabihin mo kasi biased. <laughs> Depende kung terrestrial, ecological, or non-ecological. Okay. And they harbor about uh, 4 to 5 percent of all described species. So, there are many species that are in the coral reef. And of course, ecologically, they provide a lot of function. The topographic relief, there are highs, lows, there are butas. Yun yung mga shelter or bahay ng mga iba yung mga organisms. Kaya rin napaka-diverse na mga species na nakikita mo doon. Kasi maraming um, uh, shelter na nagpo-provide ng iba yung klase ng um, coral reefs. <laughs> Tapos, eto, ano itong mga to? Sino mga ka... Ano yung hindi, huwag yung pasigil yung sea urchin. Ito, ano yung common na itong mga ka? Ano yung mga ka? Sila ay seaweed or macro-algae. May mga green algae. At yung sinasabi kong isang type of algae na calcium carbonate. So if you touch this, ito may brittle. Can crumble. Ito, isa pa. This is actually encrusting algae as well. Tapos meron na yung mga mas typical seaweed na alam natin, uh, fleshy, slime. Ano pa yung ibang mga kita sa reef? Sino may alam nito? Ano yung nandun sa video that you saw? 
the <laughs> shrimps that are like ants, ant colonies, but shrimp colonies within the sponge. Uh, so they have their own social dynamics. <clears throat> Diba, meron kang analogy rin na nag-evolve ng mga strategies for terrestrial environments. Ito, ano to? Huh? Anemone. Hindi nyo alam? Hindi <laughs> ba lang yung kulay? <laughs> si anemone. So, bakit hindi mo? Ito, actually, this is still a clownfish. <laughs> Ibang species. <laughs> Pero hindi siya stereotype <laughs> na parang hindi mo. <clears throat> Ito, maraming itong ganitong itsura ng reef sa Caribbean. Yung mga yan, mga sea fans, uh, soft corals. Ito, ano to? Sinabi ko yun. Ano siya? Ito? 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 coral? Crown of thorns. It's a starfish. Uh, crown of thorns starfish that can uh, eat a lot of coral. This is a... <laughs> Fireworm. Yeah, huwag nang hawakan niya. Makati. Uh, one of the rulers in the world. Uh, ito. Ito. Ano siya? Slug. Okay, sea slug. Pero, sea slug in general, meron yung mas, ano, mas spe uh, specialized in term for this. Meron meron? Imagine what you mean. Nudie brand. There are types of sea slugs. Ito. I mean, you know, parang cone shell na gastrophobe. So, ito alam niya na alam niya. So, these are the more mobile ones. Well, all those still slow, and then of course, uh, the invertebrates, and then you have the vertebrate um, organisms on the reef. Ito, ano ito? Sino na nakakita na ng cisne? Saan? Anilaw, oh, anilaw. Actually, may nakikita ko. Sa, saan ba yung cisne? Saan pong sighting yung cisne? They're one of the most venomous animals in the world. <laughs> but the good thing is they're not aggressive. So as, as much as possible, they will try to get out of your way. Um, unless you corner them, of course, <laughs> if you try to do something to But when you see them, there's a lot of sea snakes on these islands. Ito, alam niyo kung ito? Ang lalang mabarak ko. Of course, ito. Ah, ito. Ano ito? Sila yung nagsuschool na mga herbivores, di ba? Ang natatanayan nyo sa video, yung in-overpower nila yung nagpo-farm na, nagpo-territorial na isla. Meron kasi na herbivores na nagpo-farm. So that's why they protect their territories and try to cultivate yung mga algae in a certain area. But then these come along and then overwhelm them and try to repeat the, the plots of an algae. Ito. Huh? Stonefish. One, another one of the, uh, one, one of the most venomous organisms in the world. So, don't make an camouflage. 
Yeah, they look like the substrate, and then they realize why they're not going to be able to do it. Don't you think about it? Don't you think about it? It's so good. Remember the Philippines? Pero ano yan, there's yung spines, yung toxic. So, pag natusok ka doon, may kailangan kami na, I think, we suspect my health been stung by that. Kasi we were crawling on the bottom, tapos may mukhang minahawa. So, we were nag-numb na yung kanyang arm. Pero nakagapan naman. Well, it's not easy. You need to have a treatment for the insomnia. So, the Philippines is the most diverse, one of the most diverse areas for farms in the world. Uh, hot spot, uh, hot, hot spot of the hot spot for biodiversity. And yet, yeah, functionally, we have a lot to thank reefs for because they help protect our coastlines from erosion, from storm surges, from tsunami even, um, because they break those waves out uh, in the uh, areas that are offshore rather than onto the shore. And of course, Ang masasarap natin, sorry, yes? <laughs> yeah, pwede rin naman masira. Pag lalo na pag uh, may type, may sasakit. Pero gano'n, gano'n. Napaka-undo po sa'yo. But they can regenerate. As long as hindi sunod-sunod yung uh, tsaka healthy pa rin. So, livelihood, tourism, fisheries, Bakit, di ba, pupunta dito more fun in the Philippines for diving, ganyan. Yung ating mga lapu-lapu, saray, ano, gansari. And, ito, for mga ekonomista, yung mga way of monetizing the value of coral reefs, which, yun nga, kailangan mo, pag gusto mong ipakita sa mga politicians, why they should care about saving bees or conserving bees. It's because of Vera, <laughs> ultimately. For, this is a per one square kilometer of a typical healthy, healthy beef. So for fisheries, whether export or consumption, tourism, coastal protection, all of those functions, if you put values onto those, what you end up is with is around 31,000 to 113,000 annual revenue dollars. So, per one square kilometer, if 50% of about 27,000 square kilometers um, healthy, then multiply that, then you would have about a billion contribution of weeds to our economy. So, you know, protection, aesthetics, biodiversity, and because Tourism, yes. Fisheries, yes. Yun yung mga madaling i But the rest, it's a little more difficult. But still, real. So, let's just take two minutes. Just think of one threat. What is uh, one threat to coral reefs? How, do you, how that threat happened? Or what's its source? And how, uh, what, what it's what is its effect on the reef and how it potentially you can mitigate or prevent the, that from affecting So, two minutes left.
souvenir shop, they have corals. Sweet. Okay. You don't realize that the, they're taking the corals over and over to the point that it's actually damaging the ecosystem. But if you can control it somehow, either by, by policy, by uh, making the practice legal or even just control, then maybe that problem will be solved. There are, no, there are some measures. For the, the chorus, uh, many species of chorus are in the side list, the red list, for they should not be collected or exported. To summarize the Sinabi Ninja, so from that large scale, so I'm the American Sabi of global warming, you resurfacing the global stressors. So from a larger perspective, again, climate change effects, increasing temperature, uh, ocean acidification, increasing sea level, and especially when the animal scientists that they're operating under stress conditions already. So if you stress them even more, I'm gonna break them. Um, ito ang nangyari pag bleaching. Bleaching because of high temperatures. So yun yung in relation to climate change. So I think normal, zooks and are expelled or namamatay pag nagbe-bleach uh, yung world. Masyadong matagal yung uh, warm temperatures in the water. If the warm temperature um, medyo na minimize or bumalik sa normal after a few days or weeks, that coral that was bleached can become, can recover. And yung zoom sa atin ay babalik din. Patanggap yung <laughs> But, kung masyadong prolonged yung stress, masyadong mainit talaga, that can lead to the coral not recovering. That <clears throat> so, ito yung mga children na so no, the damage can really be a lot and extensive. Kung malakas ang oral bleaching na And then of course, ano yung global, but you can't forget the local. So yung dynamite fishing, harvesting, illegal harvesting of corals, and other. Uh, mga ornamentals and pollution sediments coming from the land covering your corals. Crown of thorns, disease, from, possibly from pollution over any sort of urban harvesting of fishes. So, all of those must controllable from the local side. Still mahirap, pero at least yun yung mga pwede natin gawa ng paraan. Kung para mo dun sa global na medyo mas mahirap na uh, uh, i-implement. And finally, marami kasi yung sasabi doon sa in-bloom daw mga coral scientists. Yung mga matay na mga coral, 2050, wala na tayong coral reef. Pero, eto, pinapakita ko sa slide na to, to give hope. <laughs> na, Hindi natin ang reef, hindi coral na reef necessarily, just reef na, na ecosystem have existed for a very, very long time. Dito pa sa may Cambrian Union. Pero hindi sila made up of corals. They're made up of other organisms like cyanobacteria, mga mollusks, or gastropods. So, Dito lang sa more recent na dumami yung what we know as coral reefs. So maybe in the future, if they, there are coral reefs, maybe some species of coral will be hardy enough and survive all of these uh, stressors. Or baka susunod sh ano, shell reefs, shellfish reefs na yung iba na naman type of shellfish uh, <laughs> magsusurvive. But most likely, considering how these structures have survived through all of the millions of years, reefs, naibaybang types, kala ba, meron ka rin na some type of reef. Tanong lang eh, anong klase? Coral ba? 
sorry, yun, sana. Or baka yung coral reefs nandun na sa polar areas. <laughs> Wala na sa ato doon, masyadong matindi po sa polar areas. Welcome to Dev and Trek. <laughs> All in one piece. That's good. And um, hopefully, mag stay on weather na slightly cloudy but calm <laughs> conditions all throughout the day. Uh, okay na yan. Basta walang hangin. Okay lang kaunting ulan. Walang hangin. Mas mahirap ang hangin. So, um, nga, maraming activities <laughs> kayo ngayon. Uh, gagawin. And so, pace nyo lang sarili nyo. Tandaan nyo, huwag kayong ma-dehydrate yung sinabi ko sa class na um, remember yung sunblock dahil kahit na cloudy, there's still a lot of UV um, that's uh, going around. And so, malaming tubig, just remember to hydrate. Always. Okay, so yung kung napasin nyo, actually hindi to island it's still part of the mainland ng Luzon it's just that it's inaccessible to land so we had to go by boat kita nyo, puro talaga uh, steep na mountain area right next to the coast so that's typical of the, this area in Batangas mabini, yung mga kalatagan ganyan, yan yung pa yung merong mga Uh, slope na mahabang beach ganyan. Pero dito mountain, then steep na uh, slope into the water and also steep reef. So you'll see that later maybe. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, and that's why it's very you know, uh, this area is very conducive to reef growth maraming rocky substrates that the corals could grow on. So that you know, went through the coral reef lecture in some form or the other So, alam nyo yung mga kailangan ng mga reef uh, to form. And, <laughs> anong, ano kaya? Anong type ng reef? You know, I think 102 ito na lecture. Anong type ng reef ito? <laughs> Fringing reef. Dahil it's right next to the to the coastline and you can just snorkel it. So, there's a lot of zones in the reef. And sino nakakatanda ko ano yun? Zones, reef zones. Uh, <laughs> reef crest. Merong reef crest. Merong ano yung nags dito pa sa part na to? Back reef. Tapos, may reef crest. And then, four reef or reef front. Sige. Reef, that slopes. So, reef slope na area. So that that's actually a if if you go from snorkel from there all the way doon, may kita nyo yung zones na yon. So reef flat, back reef, um, reef flat area, uh, reef crest, but it's not so pronounced dito kasi wala naman sobrang alon. Um, and then the slope, so biglang lalalim doon sa part na yon. At baby, aabot tayo doon. <laughs> so take note. Na what we're going, the, what we'll be snorkeling in later will be waters that will be deeper than you know, you know, <laughs> So and it's better, so you don't um, accidentally hit corals at hindi kayo masusugatan ng mga corals at mahakas sakit sa kanila <laughs> as well. So it's better for all of us. But you will have to pass through some shallow portions, and we will. Um, tell you na yun nga, as soon as you go into the water, mag, kailangan yung mag horizontal. So, makikinig kayo doon. <laughs> okay, but we'll guide you pag so, dating sa snow today. Um, so, that's one part of the activity. The other part is the plankton sampling. So, reefs are also um, very abundant with plankton. Hindi lang corals. So, all the microscopic plankton um, that you can see in the open ocean, marami rin ditong iba-ibang klase. And actually, they can be very diverse. So, mga larvae, babies ng corals, ng na jellies. Kung meron kayo mga naranam naman na kaunting sting, it's okay. Unless sobra na siyang pain, <laughs> then let us know immediately. 
Uh, may mga sting, sting, natural lang yan. Pag uh, labas niyo sa water, um, we have vinegar. Um, kung masyado na siyang na-sting, then we'll, we'll put vinegar on it. At wag niyong lagyan ng fresh water because that will trigger the, the nematocyst. Uh, so it's worse kung if you put fresh water. Um, and so plant, you'll see what plankton are there in the water and what are stinging. <laughs> in um, by sampling with the you go out on a yung bangka uli, get some um, try to find the station uh, using the GPS so si simulate nyo yung paano kami naghahanap ng station sa dagat when it's all water <laughs> and then uh, try to figure out the depth deploys a uh, water sampler and uh, uh, an expensive equipment that will tell you the temperature and salinity of the water. So, because uh, who is going to be careful! <laughs> Sampling, meron kayong isa count. Isa count nyo. Under a um, uh, special slide that's called the Sedgwick slide, you'll be able to determine yung abundance ng certain types of plankton. Different aspects of marine science, from you know, water column sampling all the way to the benthic aspect. And for the uh, groups na um, yung uh, for the snorkeling part, magmini reef survey kayo. Point transect, if you remember what that is. <laughs> There's a transect being laid out for you there. Tapos yun yung to try nyo identify ano yun nandun sa isang point. So, uh, per group, group one, nasan? Sa MS1, ang ano nyo is, try, um, papakita sa inyo yung iba-ibang uh, kinukwento namin yung types ng forms ng corals, maybe yung ibang fish or ibang invertebrates na makikita doon. So, kung meron kayo makita, ma'am, ano yun? Huwag <laughs> nga lang, yung pag mga fish, mahirap yun kasi pag tingin mo, wala. <laughs> so, pero watch out, meron dyan lang si Hill sa Finding Nemo, si Gil. Andyan yun, marami siya dyan. Black and yellow and white. Uh, si Dory, baka makita niyo. <laughs> si Nemo, I think meron din. Para fish, meron dyan. Ta uh, yung ano, uh, giant clam, meron dyan. <laughs> so, plankton, maraming iba-ibang diatoms. <laughs> At copepods. So, makikita niyo silang gumagalaw at marirealize niyo siya yung, sila yung nilulunok niyo habang nagsasnow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, plants and diet. <laughs> it's protein. <laughs> so actually, filter feeders. <laughs> Questions? Yes. What are the hazards that we Hazards. So, explain only when you have a snorkeling. Other hazards, the water. Um, there might be a bit of 
Currents. <laughs> there might be a slight current, especially this afternoon. But we're guided, naman namin kayo. So, but uh, if you feel tired, make cramps kayo. Just let us know. No, we know. But uh, well, hazards in general, yung dehydration and um, sun, uh, too much sun, sunburned or overheating, ganyan. So, ingat kayo in general about those. And, huwag kayo matatapinok, madudulas, mga ganong general uh, things. In the water, um, ano, pag sa bangka mo na, sa bangka, ingat lang sa paglakad, try to be conscious about where people are kasi baka mamaya, eh, nag, nandito kayo lahat sa one side, so balance it out. And then always have the life vest on. Pag nasa bangka and na nasa water. Um, and then sa so water mismo, of course, do not touch. Yeah. As much as possible, do not touch with any part of your body. <laughs> yung nitube. Yung mga, uh, yung nasa bottom, uh, and any fish or uh, swimming, op, um, swimming animals, uh, organisms around. So, malay nyo, hindi nyo alam kung kunyari yung hala nyo ba to, yung pala, eh, rockfish. <laughs> mga ganun. So, yun nga. Try, kaya nga, as much as possible, horizontal lang kayo. Relax, float in the water. Don't touch anything. <laughs> Don't leave anything as well. Um,